Today I'm sharing how I improved my old thermostat to something modern that can be controlled by a phone or a laptop. That system allows me to schedule the temperature in a particular room during a time, for example at night. It's my do-it-yourself story about how I built such a system from scratch. There are dozens of ready-to-go solutions like Ecobee or Google Nest. But to install them, you have to understand how your current system works, so that you can replace it. I hope this video will help someone to improve their heating system. Let's start with basics and review how my old thermostat actually works. When I opened the cover, I realized that I was lucky enough to have an obsolete thermostat with a mercury tube. Nobody produces them anymore, but they are widely spread across America. This invention is genius and dumb at the same time. If we want to adjust the temperature, we should change the incline of the lever. When we change it, mercury falls and closes the electric circuit. If we incline the lever to the other side, it will break the circuit. This tube is placed on top of a flat spiral spring. When the temperature decreases, the spiral spring bends down and mercury falls. When the temperature increases, the spring bends to the top and the tube moves accordingly. It will be simpler if we look at it in action. Important information. Thermostats could be various. For example, they can have additional channel to control a fan. This video is not a guide on how you can easily change any particular heating system. I do not recommend messing with the heating if you don't know how to do it and if you don't have a proper education and degree. It's dangerous and you can kill someone or burn a house. Meanwhile, I'll show you my heating system case. To upgrade this system, I will need a few thermosensors in various rooms and a small server equipped with a relay. The server board will receive all the data from the thermometers and either close or open the electrical circuit. I've decided to build the new smart house system with the following elements. Raspberry Pi, the main board or a server. It will be a decision center. A relay device that will be connected to the Raspberry Pi with wires. The relay is an electrical operated switch. It will turn the heating system on and off. A home Wi-Fi router. By this I mean any Wi-Fi router that provides coverage in each room. An ESP32 device. A small chip board that has Wi-Fi and can obtain data from external sensors. And finally, last but not least, a DS18B20 thermal sensor. This is essentially a thermometer that can provide the current temperature of the surroundings. The Raspberry Pi connection is simple. The 5 volt pin is connected to the relay's DC+, the ground pin to DC- and GPO23 to the relay's input. Overall assembly took 5 minutes. I didn't use solder, it was just plug and play. Luckily, I can speed up the video and show you the process.
that's it for the Raspberry Pi. I used a case with a fan for additional protection. The board is connected to a relay and waiting for the software to be installed. Next, let's see how to assemble the ESP32 board and the thermometer. I have a video on the channel about different options for using a resistor or connecting directly to the board. You can find links to all the hardware parts in this video's description. And that's it for the ESP. It employs the same plug and play technique. The thermometer is connected to the board spin. The remaining task is to equip the boards with the appropriate software to bring them to life. In my case, I use a Node.js HTTP server on the Raspberry Pi. It listens for the network calls from the sensors and this server decides when to activate or deactivate the relay. The ESP board is an HTTP client that periodically sends the current sensor's temperature data. Let's say the ESP board sends a POST request to the Raspberry Pi every minute with the temperature and sensor ID. The Raspberry Pi will store the status in a database and maintain a log of temperatures from all sensors. At any given moment, the Raspberry Pi knows if it has current data from the room that should be heated to a certain degree. If the room is underheated, the server will activate the relay. The server will deactivate the relay once the room reaches the required temperature. And that's it. I will make a brief review of my GitHub repository. First I will copy link and then use git loan command to download it and then I'll open it with Visual Studio Code. The codebase has two folders, one for the ESP and another one for a Raspberry. Raspberry is the server part, so it requires some additional software. I've created install sh script that will install all required software. It will install Node.js, NPM, Ginx and MariaDB server. Then it will install the library that controls a relay. This command will set up a database. Then we will run npm install and it will install all libraries that requires by Node.js. Last lines start the HTTP server. Ecosystem.config will store all credentials for MySQL database and for administration panel. The server entry point is index.js. It will include all required files and run them. I've organized the project structure into smaller logical models to enhance clarity. These include a util model for utility functions, a UI model which contains the HTML for the pages, a static model for the styles and script, an SQL model with the database structure and Nginx model for the server configuration a database model to fetch data from the database and last but not least a controller model that handles all the HTTP requests. The ESP32 folder contains a lot of C modules, 
we will go through them a bit later. Now I will show you how to set up Raspberry Pi. Let's open raspberrypi.com slash software and download and install Imager. In this app I need to choose a device, in my case it's Raspberry Pi 5, and choose the operational system. In my case it's 46-bit operational system. Next I've plug SD card and choose it as a storage. Next I'll set up settings of the Raspberry Pi. It's important to set OpenHeat as a host name. All ESP devices will make requests to openheat.local. Next I need to set the username and password, which will be required for the SSH connection. I'm not overly concerned about security since the server is only accessible within the local network. Therefore, I've chosen the nerdy sync as both the login and password. Remember to enter SSID and password for your Wi-Fi. It's crucial to input this information here. And finally, we can save it and press yes and wait until it will be flashed to the SD card. That's it, now I can eject the SD card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Then I'll power up the device and use the command line from my laptop to connect to it. The Raspberry Pi is powered up, so I'll try to connect to it. SSH NordySyncs at openheat.local It will ask if I recognize the device, I'll put yes and then I'll put my password and my password is NordySyncs. I will double check if the operational system has a git. It seems like we have it from the box, so no needs to install it. Now I will use gitlon command to download all files to the Raspberry Pi. Then I'll go to Raspberry Pi folder from this repository. And I'll just run install.sh script that we discussed before. In a few moments it will ask me to set up Maria database. The current password is empty, so I'll just press enter. Then I will say no and change root password. The password in a server configuration file is nerdy things, so I'll stick with it. Then I will remove anonymous users and I don't want to disallow root login remotely, because we can use it from the local network. Yes to remove test database. And same yes to reload privileges. Thanks for using MariaDB message means the end of setup of database. Finally, this table means that HTTP server is started and we can use it. Let's open browser and go to the openheat.local using 8080 port. I see the sign in the window and it means that my HTTP server works. Now I need to set up my ESP sensors. First I will open ESP32 DS 18-bit 20 folder and press menu view and command palette and then type ESP IDF configure. It will open the installation and we can press express and leave it as default. Just press install and wait a bit until it will download everything. This window means that setup is done and we can review our code base. First thing first, we can go to nerdy Wi-Fi model and copy and paste nerdyconfig.c file and put our Wi-Fi credentials there. We can rename it, open it and we should replace SSID name and SSID password. Basically that's all that required to set up an ESP device. I'll open main folder with up main file that uh, is entry point and uh, this you can see the JSON that will be sent from this device. It will be sent in a loop uh, and uh, we will use it with some delay. 
In the end of the file you can see up main method that has Wi-Fi connection, it has temperature in it and it has infinite loop of sending messages. And all the layers are defined in the top of this file. I am not going to review each particular file in this project because I have a few videos about thermosensors on my channels, so if you are interested in, you can review them. Now I will plug in the ESP and set up this software on it. First I will choose USB serial port and then I will choose UART flash method and press build flash and monitor button. We will see a lot of useful information in the terminal. For example, this line says that uh, thermosensor was successfully initialized. And this line means that we received IP from our Wi-Fi. And this is the most important part. We can see that we sent a POST request and we received the result from the server. I will set up a few more thermometers and test everything together. Ok, I'm back on the Raspberry Pi HTTP server. I can use NordSync as login and password and after I will be landed on charts. I can see some data from thermometers and uh, it will be displayed here. Also we can see thermometers on a sensor page. We can rename them and uh, use new names for our purposes. Next we have a relay page. It will control the relay device. We can press and block relay and uh, we can see that currently it's disabled. If I want to control a temperature in the room, I need link a sensor. And we can do it right here. I can choose a sensor and choose time from. It means that from this time to another time we will control this, like we will rely on this data from the sensor. We can set mean temperature and max temperature. In other words, we set to the server. Enable the heater if the sensor on the first floor has the temperature less than 18 degrees and the current time is between 3 pm and 5 pm. Or we can enable the heater for some time. For example, we can choose 5 minutes and press the enable button. To unlink sensor or to disable the heater, we can just delete action in the table. Now let's look on the relay in action. We can press enable and we see a red light on the relay. And disable it by removing the action. And finally, this is what I have in result. I hope you have enjoyed the project. Please like and comment to support the channel and see more such videos. Thank you.